Hello and welcome to the Dancers Podcast. I am your host, Dan Donahue. Uh, I got nothing to really plug up top. Check out the Patreon. I've been doing those new little uh, sync videos, and it's been really fun, and I put a bonus one up on the Patreon, and there's a bunch of backlogged podcasts, and I'm going to do the question section uh, of this episode on the Patreon, so check that out. Other than that, enjoy the episode. What's up, you little... You little musk oxen, you little, you little rams from days of yore. How are you? Welcome to the Dancers Podcast. I am so glad to be back. I have been traveling. I've been working on a bunch of different little projects that took me, unfortunately, away from releasing this episode and, well, recording it too. It's not like I recorded this episode already. I'm recording it right now. Not to get too, not to blow your freaking mentality right off the bat, okay? Not to enter your mind frame in a way that might be uncomfortable to the uh, non-explorative psychonauts out there, okay? Me, I'm a, I'm a psychedelic adventurer, okay? I'll say all the, I'll say all the weird stuff that other people aren't, uh, aren't comfortable saying, like, what, what's an atom made out of? Or, uh, no, I can't pay for this Bud Light now, but can I tell you a riddle? Or, uh, you know, it, when you really think about it, do I live in my mom's basement or do you live in your mom's basement? And the answer is always uh, that you live in your mom's uh, basement because you're 45 and you did nothing but uh, mushrooms and then try to learn how to knit your own wool hats and you failed at it. And that, you know, that's not about anyone in particular. Some people might uh, some people might come after me. Some people might say I'm talking about this person or that person. I'm just talking about the general, the general kind of guy who was really into festivals and then didn't find other things to be into. And then he just ended up kind of wearing weird pants for the rest of his life. And that's, that became his whole thing. And that's fine. I could have been that guy. If I had gone to the festivals I wanted to go to as a kid, which there were many, I really, oh, I really wanted to go to OzFest when I was younger. I really wanted to go to OzFest when I was younger. When I was young, I was really into the band uh, Lamb of God because the lead singer went, <laughs> he, he made, uh, he, well, he does it better. He does it a lot better than I did right there. But uh, basically, he went and uh, and like he did that really loudly, and um, he was a big influence in my life. And I wanted to go see Lamb of God, and I saw that Lamb of God was playing at Ozfest, so I asked my parents if I could go, and they said maybe. But in that way, there where they were like, "Well, we've said no to you enough this week." So right now we're going to say maybe, and then we're going to say no. Parents do that sometimes, and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's Parenting is hard. Do whatever, do whatever you have to other than, you know, uh, abuse and neglect, you know? I mean, there's, uh, there's probably other limitations I would put on you, but I, w- I would go as far as to say if you are not abusing and neglecting your child, you are at least way ahead of a lot of other parents. So good for you, and you deserve your flowers for that. Um, but my parents didn't let me go to Ozfest, which I was very uh, disappointed in. I would have loved to go to Ozfest. I would have loved to see them, you know, wheel Ozzy Osbourne out. That dude, man. I mean, was there carrot juice in the heroin? Because that guy was kicking around for a long time. You couldn't understand what he was saying, but he was moving around. He was animated. He was, I mean, he was spry. I really don't know how they kept people going back then. But he's still, Keith Richards too. Keith Richards too. I don't know what they were doing back then. They have to talk to these, uh, they have to, I sound like such an old person. I was about to say they have to talk to these rappers nowadays. But there was a big, like, uh, SoundCloud rappers and, like, other popular online rappers. There was a big string of them, unfortunately, passing away, which is really sad because a lot of them were really talented. Keith Richards should have given those guys a call and been like, hey, boys, this is how you do it. But, alas. Alas. Um, I have some things I want to, uh, 
I wanted to talk about. First of all, I want to start with the most recent because this literally just happened, so it's fresh on my mind. I come home from doing an open mic right right before I record this podcast. And uh, a day ago, I saw a little kitten, the cutest little kitten you've ever seen, um, on a dumpster outside of my apartment. And I got out of my car to go. I don't know what I would have done. I, I have no. Listen, when you see a kitten that seems to be in any form of distress, you go to that kid and you figure it out later. OK, that's what you do. All right. I don't, I'm not going to have anyone in the comments be like, oh, well, you uh, you should have just left the kitten. If you see a kitten, if I uh, I'll I'll be personal here because I don't want to give any advice that might be wrong. But if I see a kitten that seems to be in distress. I mean, sure, I was I was going to but I, the kitten what long story short, the kitten ran away before I got to it. But I'm going to try to see if I can help that kitten. OK, that's that's just me. That's just me and the world talking to each other. OK. That's just me, you, and the universe talking to each other. If I see a kitten, and that kitten seems to be having a bad time, I'm going to try to make that kitten have a good time, whatever that takes. I'll jingle my keys. I'll uh, I'll slap myself in the face a few times if I feel like that kitten doesn't like me. If I feel like a kitten doesn't like me, I'll I'll do a little bit of, uh, you know, I'll, I'll punch myself in the nuts just one time just to see if I can get a little rise out of that little baby, that beautiful little baby. But when I got out of the car, the kid wasn't there. So I was upset and I was disappointed and I went back in my apartment. But there's a lot of like stray cats in my neighborhood. So I didn't really think a lot of it. Now, I come to the apartment building today and lo and behold, uh, two of my neighbors who are really, really nice guys. Uh, everyone in my apartment uh, building lives by themselves. And um, I assume it's because all of us, me included, have made our mistakes in life. You know what I mean? That's my apartment. My apartment is an assortment of men and women who made mistakes, and now they're here. And that's fine. The rent isn't that bad. And um, that's about all you can say about it, but that that's where we are. I come to the uh, to the courtyard, and two of my neighbors are playing with the kitten that I had seen a while ago. And it was so nice. It wasn't just nice because the kitten was okay. It was nice because I got to talk to my neighbors, which you usually don't do that unless something horrible happens. You usually... Don't talk to a neighbor unless you are ready to scream at them. Isn't that messed up? Like, I can't imagine a situation where you're going to talk to your neighbor unless it's to yell at them to keep the noise down or, um, I don't know, or to uh, yell at them that they're having sex weird and they need to stop, you know? you can you, or, or, or to yell at them and to tell them, like, Oh, hey, I can hear you guys having sex, and it's bad, and I don't like hear. Do better at sex. You don't have to stop, but do better at it. That's the only reason I could think of to yell at your neighbor uh, or to talk to your neighbor even. But uh, we, we were just talking about the kid, and we were playing. It was just really nice. And my uh, the manager of my apartment is uh, not from this country. Uh, they're from... A, I don't want to be too specific just because of their identity and stuff, but they're from a Eastern European country that's, uh, you know, had its issues in the past. And uh, she com- she comes up to us, and this is really, like, a beautiful... I mean, I, I'm, I'm almost getting emotional talking about it. She comes up to us, and she's, like... She's, like, almost, like, holding back tears, and we're, like... We think it's because of the kitten, which it kind of is, but we think it's because she thinks the kitten's so cute. And we go, oh, hey, like, uh, how are you? And she's like, it's just amazing to see men who care about, like, a, a stray kitten. And we were a little confused. And she explained, she was like, in my country, I, I went back there, like, a couple of years ago. And when there's, like, stray dogs and stray cats, no one cares about them. And she was like... The only people who care about those animals tend to just be women and like sometimes women will care. But she was like the the men in my like uh, where I'm from don't give a like don't care at all about uh, animals and don't care at all about especially like a kitten. So she was like seeing three men playing with a kitten really made her happy. And You know, it, it gave me this perspective because it's like obviously there's so much 
that is wrong and needs to change, obviously. And th- this is sort of like a a like a side that a lot of people people will take, where it's like, I, and it's kind of like boring and drab to be like, man, you know, we got our problems, but you get, but it, it doesn't take away in any way the like problems that this country has, which are uh, like big. But I think that we can kind of get in this negativity spiral where we're only looking at bad things and that doesn't give anyone an excuse and it doesn't like excuse the reality of the situation that things really need to change for a lot of people. But that did give me a thing where I'm like, wow, I would never in my mind think it was like weird to see whatever three men like that wanted to help a kitten. But it made me, I I mean, it made me really grateful you know, it made me grateful I, like, grew up the way I did where, you know, I see a kitten and I, you know, want to pet it and stuff. <laughs> I mean, that's so simple, but it's like, and also I'm, I'm like a hypocrite because it's like I, I eat meat, you know, not super regularly, but probably once a week. I guess that might be super regularly in some people's eyes, but it's like, you know, I, I guess everybody has their own standards and I'm you know, I'm happy. I'm happy where mine are at. I'll probably go, I'll probably go full veg, but I still gotta sow my wild oats a little bit meat wise. I feel, but we're weaning down. I'm down to I'm down to once a once a week, and uh, the thing about that is everybody hates you. And I always like taking the stance and opinion that makes everybody mad, and uh, eating meat because people who eat meat, uh, you'll go out with them and you'll eat vegetarian. And they'll go, oh, are you vegetarian? You go, oh, no, I just not, I just don't want to eat meat today. So, like, if there's a vegetarian, they're like, oh, so you, you know, eat an animal once a week. And then the people who are meat eaters will go, you only eat an animal once a week? And everybody's just mad. And I'm sitting there smiling. I'm sitting there in a tornado of frowns. And I'm, and I, and I eat your anger. That, that's not actually completely true, but, um... Yeah, I I also, last night, I've had a lot of fun stuff happen. Good. You know, sometimes when you do the podcast, I have to, like, think about stuff to say, but this one's going to be pretty easy. I, I went to a, I had a great show. I had a great show in Long Beach. It was awesome. Concert venue. The pay was great, and everybody there was happy. And it's called Bear City, by the way. Bear City in Long Beach. Shout out Steve Fury. Shout out Bear City in Long Beach. It's a great place to watch a comedy show. Um, but the show finishes, and I go, all right, this night was great. How do we make it worse? Let's go to the casino. <laughs> Sometimes it's weird. It, I got, I, it's good to get an opportunity to talk through this because I've realized it about myself. Sometimes I feel like I'm sort of a astronaut in my own life. God, that sounds so stupid. No, th- all right, I'm I'm not, I'm going to push through this statement even though I do feel a little bit uh icky saying that sort of thing and I'm going to move on. Sometimes I feel like I'm an astronaut in my own life. Sometimes like I will put myself in a situation that's like weird or uncomfortable just because I want to kind of explore it. And uh there's a casino there's like a lot of casino I play poker. I like playing poker. Um, there's a casino that I go to to play poker that I'm comfortable at and I usually win money at and like I play well there and uh, then there's a casino that I really don't like and that really makes me uncomfortable and I don't like the, uh, I don't like anything about it and I ended up going to that one. I don't, I, I really couldn't explain to you why. I don't even know if it's like a good or healthy impulse to do that but I am glad that I did it because like there were a lot of really interesting things that happened. I, I sat down at the table. There's a guy sitting there. And he has headphones in. Uh, and Which is kind of normal. And there's two seats up next to him, which is rare. Like, usually uh, you have to wait a long time to get to a table. And there were people waiting for poker tables. So I, I went to the floor manager. And I was like, hey, can I sit there? And they were like, yeah. So I sit down. And the guy is doing this. This is what he's doing. He's going, like he's just making noises like that sort of a drone 
almost like uh, it, it almost reminded me of like throat singing in a way. It, it definitely wasn't that, but it it were it was like, and it was that that frequent he he did not stop. At no point did he stop making every exhale was, and this is a perfectly fine situation for me. I think because of my time in uh in special ed i've i've learned to not get frustrated with things like that like when i've been around a lot of people who had like you know and i immediately kind of clocked it as probably some sort of a tick or um just just like you know some sort of a an an impulsive thing that he was doing or maybe like a nervous thing It it didn't really matter to me why uh if i have a skill it's being able to still focus and not really allow that to like affect me in an emotional way like because you're thinking a lot and you could get frustrated at somebody making noises like that but I just kind of didn't uh in that moment luckily because and that's good because it let me keep sitting there and this other guy sits down and this other guy is just your stereotypical like I, I call them little mares okay these little mares are guys who run their kingdom, whatever it is. It could be a four-person workspace, or it could be, like, uh, their neighborhood, like, because they're in the front lawn all the time. But little mares are guys who just act like the mayor no matter what, even though they're, like— this guy was like knew everybody at the casino, players, dealers, knew the floor guy by name, like all that stuff. And he sits down, and he's he like starts talking. He, he kind of clocks the guy making noises, and uh, and I go, oh no, this guy's gonna like start being mean to this guy because he he said like a couple of things that weren't necessarily like uh they they weren't necessarily like mean or bullying or whatever but it, it, there were there were things where i was like oh boy here it comes you know what i mean he like uh he said jokingly to the guy next to him like as the guy was making the noise like oh english only at the tables which is not a rule by or at least i've never seen that enforced or and, and the guy who said that by the way was speaking spanish to everybody the whole time so not even he wanted to enforce that but he just said it as a joke right about this guy so i was like oh god like i I get really uh, uptight specifically when um, it it's a I I have like very few things I would call pet peeves, but whenever I see I, like I couldn't watch uh, I Am Sam, and I couldn't watch Good Time because uh, th- there are two movies where people who uh, either people who are being like Sean Penn isn't special needs in the, the actor in good times uh was special needs but um i get really upset when i see someone who is like differently abled g- get into a situation where they're in distress like it, I, I i'm sure it's like just kind of a response from um like you know my own childhood or whatever but i i just kind of can't it, it really like affects me emotionally if Obviously, it's like a loaded word, but it, it it fits the bill of like, quote unquote, triggered. Like, it if there's something that tr- triggers me, it's that. Um, so I was like, oh, f- like if this guy starts like messing with this guy, I'm gonna have to say something, and then I'm gonna have to like get into some sort of a weird altercation. And you don't want to do that at casino; they'll throw you out really easily if you start problems there. Um, but what happened instead? was I think this guy clocked that the other guy just had, was just different. Like, he was just, like, different kind of guy. And uh, they're in a hand together. And the whole, now, poker is a game that's all about making decisions. And uh, it's very uh, important, etiquette-wise, that you respect the, like, uh, people who are involved in hands. Like, it it's if I was talking and you two are involved in the hand, it's okay for you to turn to me and be like, "Excuse me, could you be quiet? We're in a hand right now." Like that's that's just etiquette. So this guy's involved with a hand. It's so funny. This guy's involved in the hand, 
And the guy next to me, you know, is obviously making the noises like, and uh, the guy who I'm talking about, the little mayor, looks at him like he's going to tell him to shut up. But instead, the little mayor starts making the noises, too. And then, like, a couple other guys at the table start making the noises. And the guy who's making the noises originally, like, likes it. He's like, you know, like, he, there. so it ends up everybody at the table is making the same noises. And whenever a card came out, the original guy would be a little bit louder. And then everybody at the table would get, got a little bit louder, too. So I, I was sitting there, and all these guys were just making, like, and the like people on the floor are looking at us like we're nuts because this doesn't last like not a long time it lasts like kind of a long time and uh and i'm just sitting there and there's an empty seat next to me next to me on my right at this time and i'm just like oh there's not a sane person in the world that would sit down at this table right now because not only is it like a low stakes poker can feel like you're sitting at a bus stop like that's the that's the sort of vibe and mood that people are in and uh i was like not only that it's everybody is also making this like you would think we all knew each other and we're playing a prank on everybody but it was just so funny it was just such a funny thing to see like it's 11 on a wednesday and we're all in a poker room so like whatever sins you have committed that brings you to that situation whatever wrongs you have committed in past lives that brings you to that situation who knows but it was just such a good time it was just such like a because it wasn't perfectly wholesome like obviously that guy wasn't like the 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 little mayor obviously wasn't like perfectly attuned to this guy's thing but I, I could tell that he made sort of like a decision in his own mind like i'm not going to be mean to this guy and um you know p poker is very much like a l sort of guys club and it's very like th there's it, it, it's actually a really funny mix of like very bravado jock type guys and then very bookish like intelligent math guys so that that's what's cool about it, but those are just two different kinds of guys that smell bad, and that's poker. It's every kind of guy that smells bad, me included. Okay, so that I don't know. That was just nice. It, it's good seeing people kind of like work through friction in that way, and uh, come out the other end in like a way that's not necessarily like butting heads. I when I was working on a project. Uh, this week that I, I didn't release because the person I made it with, we kind of, we had, we had some friction. Th this is like a tough thing to navigate as an adult. It's friction, not confrontation, um, not abuse, but friction because it doesn't always present itself like on its face. Like there's a lot of situations where you end up leaving going is that person mad at me? Am I mad at them? Like, what is that? It it almost feels better to straight up have, like, a yelling match with somebody. Do you know what I mean? It almost feels better to have it out with someone just because when you do that, you know where you stand and you know where they stand. And it, it, even if that's an uncomfortable place, it's like, at least you know. But when there's friction with someone, sometimes you feel crazy for even asking, like, because you don't want this situation where it's like, Hey man, are we okay? And then they're like, uh, yeah, of course. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, of course, yeah, I know, I knew we are. And they're like, why did you ask? You're like, shut up. <laughs> hey man, shut up. And they're like, why, why did you just tell me to shut up? And you're like, F and then you guys actually do get into a argument off of uh, you asking. So that that's always the fear. And it wasn't it wasn't anything big. It was just like, you know, there was a little shortness on both ends and there was a little bit of like um the mood just kind of wasn't right. It was no one's fault. But afterwards, I I just, you know, called this person and we talked about it. And it wasn't anything bad. It wasn't anything that led to a you know, complete resolution, but it was fine. And then the next day, I called them and I said, 
hey, is everything okay? Like, not with us, just in your life. And I realized, like, and they explained to me it wasn't. And that that's always something that we forget. Is we get so trapped in, like, us as the main character and other people as just kind of these roles they play and they're either friends or enemies of ours and da 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 But it's like, dude, so many of the situations where you li- leave feeling, like, indignant and, like, someone wronged you and, like, I can't believe that they would do that to me, 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 me. It's like... You re if you really look at them, you really talk to them. A lot of the time, they're not thinking about you because they have some issue going on in their life, or and that's not an excuse for their behavior. You shouldn't act like uh, not that the person I'm talking about acted in any sort of a rude way, but I'm talking more in general now. Like you shouldn't act poorly to people, but when someone does act poorly. I, a lot of the time, a lot more times than you would think, they have something specific going on in their life that is just like brutal. And I don't know, it just kind of reconnected me with that idea. And it reconnected me kind of with myself because I realized like, whenever I'm like short with people, I'm always like either sleep deprived or one of my mustache hairs won't go down and that just causes me to be a mon no i'm kidding but um yeah you know it it's tough it it's tough it's like when you're having a life like when you're living a life you get so wrapped up in yourself which is kind of like a necessity because you need to make money you need to find a way to make money. You need to, f- whether that's through a career or the dumb stuff that I do or whatever, you need to find a way to make money. And I think that just that puts so much pressure and stress on people that they can, they're looking through a pinhole. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're look and that, that pinhole is just like, sur- it's survival. And they're not looking at the big scope of things where it's like maybe they hurt your feelings, but it's like a lot of people aren't looking that wide. A lot of people aren't looking at your feelings. A lot of the times they're just looking through that little tiny pinhole and that's their whole perception of things. And usually what fits in that pinhole is like, do I have enough like money? Do I have enough food? Uh, if they have a relationship, is that okay? And they're not thinking about you. Like, dude... This has happened to me a couple of times now, and it's it's just such a part of the industry. It took a second to get used to, but now I'm just so, like, I'm so with it now. Like, I, I just understand it now, I feel. But um, when someone has a big thing move in their career, this has happened to a couple of people around me. As a person around them, you can get really really in your own head when they start answering the phone a little bit less when they start texting you back a little bit less and I'm sure like to a much smaller degree I've done that to people too and you like I mean I just gotta believe and and I do think this is true like I don't think it's personal I don't think it's ever personal I think we take everything personal that happens to us but When that happens to me, I always just go like, I mean, their lives must be so crazy now. Because when you're in the industry, it's just like a whirlwind of people messaging you. And if you're single, you're just like, you know, you're going on a rampage of, you know, having sex with anyone you want to have sex with and like all this stuff. And uh, your life just gets crazy. And you can't. You can't expect people to be able to handle that. But that's what you're doing when you get indignant about, like, maybe someone's not texting you back. Maybe someone's not messaging you. All all this stuff. And it's really a bummer, man. It's really a huge bummer because it makes it hard to feel good for people when you're taking everything so personally. You know? Because then their success isn't, like... 
just something purely good for them. And you're not kind of feeling through them. You're feeling through yourself and you're going, well, what does this mean for me? Well, does this make me feel okay? Well, does this make me... And it's a, it's a bad way to live, man. It's a bad, it's a really bad way to live. You got to just be able to like understand not everything that's good in the world is going to benefit you and that good things are going to happen to other people. And if you can, if you can like take a little bit of that and make yourself feel good about it, like if you can just take a little bit of their success and have it be kind of your success in a way, oh man, you are off to the races. If it's so cool when you're able to do that, but I mean, it's hard. It's hard, especially if you're not feeling good about yourself. Ooh, that that's when it gets really rough because it's hard not to compare yourself to other people when you don't feel like you're in a place you want to be because you see them and their success and like you want to feel good for them. But then you go, well, this is just a reminder. Like, it's just a harsh reminder that I'm not at where I want to be. That's what it is a lot of the time. Like, those feelings of rejection and all. When I, when I know when I'm in a good place, when I can take rejection and it just rolls off. Like, I had gone on a really good date with this one woman and she was great. Really liked her um fun date and uh like a couple dates in she messaged me and she said like and she was great about by the way if you're gonna draft one of these messages to somebody she did she did so good i was like oh if i ever have to do this to somebody i'm gonna kind of do this because it's it's very intelligent um she just goes like hey you're great you're so funny. You're so f- charming. Everything, ba ba ba. Um, but I just, uh, I just want to like not see you anymore romantically. And I think if I was in like, because I've been in dark places in my life in terms of like relationships and stuff. And if I had been in one of those dark places, I think resentment would come up and I would be much more likely to message this person back and be like, or not, I would, I don't think I would ever message them back, but I think in my head I would be like, uh, oh, what? Oh, oh, you think you're so good. Oh, you must think you're so cool that you don't want to see me anymore. Oh, you must. Think, and it's like, that's, it's such a bad way of thinking. It's like a, uh, the whole world is out to get me kind of mentality. But I probably would have messaged them back something short and been like, okay, sound like something like just sounds good. Like an ass, like a dummy. It's such a dummy move that like, that was me probably when I was a teenager, I would do something silly like that. But it's, it's such a dummy move to do something like that. Like if the person does you wrong, Sure, that makes sense, and you got to get it out in some way, and we're all human, right? Like, we, let's not talk like we're these, you know, uh, perfect psychology book, like, automatons, I'm going to do everything right. Because we're not, we're not. Everybody has done some weird stuff or, you know, whatever. Th- stuff that they have to, you know, take account of later. And doing something like when someone, uh, like, articulately and kindly... Uh, gives you a form of rejection to come back at that with like any sort of bitterness is it's it's normal right it's not a but it it's not good and you shouldn't do that you know I, that's a lesson I had to learn. Um, anyway, you know I think we had a good mix there. I think we had some fun and I think we had a little bit of serious. Um, I'm gonna switch over right now to the uh, Patreon to answer some questions. So. If you want to join that, the link is right below. Thanks for listening.